Love Yourself, Your Path to Happiness by Better Life Library. This book was written to help people embrace their true selves by fostering self-compassion, humility, and self-love. Pressures and comparisons in your day-to-day -day are unavoidable, so this book will help guide readers toward recognizing their own worth and finding lasting happiness. Through practical advice, motivational insights, and simple exercises, this book encourages a positive relationship with oneself, leading to a more fulfilling and joyful life. Prelude Rediscovering your inner worth, the journey begins. In a world where we are constantly bombarded with images of perfection, it's easy to lose sight of our own worth. Social media, advertisements, and even well-meaning friends and family can create an environment where we feel perpetually inadequate. The pressure to conform to an idealized version of ourselves can be overwhelming, leading to feelings of inadequacy and self-doubt. Amidst all this noise, the importance of loving ourselves often gets lost. Love yourself. Your path to happiness is more than just a book. It's a journey towards rediscovering the beauty and worth that lies within each of us. This journey is essential because true happiness starts from within. When we learn to embrace ourselves fully, including our flaws and imperfections, we unlock the door to a more fulfilling and joyous life. This book will guide you through the principles of self-compassion, humility, self-analysis, and self-love. These are not just abstract concepts, but practical tools that can help you nurture a positive relationship with yourself. Each chapter is designed to provide you with insights and exercises that will encourage you to reflect deeply on your experiences and emotions. By doing so, you'll develop a greater understanding of who you are and what makes you unique. Self-compassion is the first step on this journey. It's about being kind to ourselves, especially in moments of failure or difficulty. Often, we are our harshest critics. Learning to treat ourselves with the same kindness and understanding that we would offer to a friend can be transformative. Humility is the next step. It's about recognizing our strengths and weaknesses without falling into the trap of arrogance or self-deprecation. Humility allows us to stay grounded and connected to others, fostering deeper relationships and a more profound sense of self-awareness. Self-analysis follows, providing the tools to look within and understand our motivations, fears, and desires. This process is crucial for growth, as it helps us identify areas where we can improve and embrace change as a positive force. Finally, we arrive at self-love. This is the culmination of our journey. Self-love is about accepting and celebrating who we are, not in spite of our imperfections but because of them. It's about recognizing our intrinsic value and treating ourselves with the love and respect we deserve. As you embark on this journey, remember that self-love is not a destination but a continuous practice. There will be moments of doubt and setbacks, but each step you take towards embracing yourself is a step towards true happiness. This book aims to be your companion on this path, offering guidance, support, and encouragement along the way. Let's begin this journey together. Embrace the beauty within you, cultivate self-compassion, practice humility, engage in self-analysis, and most importantly, learn to love yourself. The path to happiness starts here, with you. Chapter 1 Embracing Self-Compassion In the journey towards self-love, self-compassion serves as the foundational step. It is the act of extending kindness and understanding to ourselves in moments of suffering, much like we would offer to a dear friend. This concept, though simple in theory, can be challenging to practice in a world that often emphasizes perfection and relentless self-improvement. Understanding self-compassion is essential for personal growth and mental health. It encourages us to treat ourselves with the same care and concern that we naturally extend to others. It involves recognizing our shared humanity, accepting that imperfection is a part of the human experience, and being mindful of our thoughts and emotions without being judgmental. Self-compassion consists of three main components, self-kindness, common humanity, and mindfulness. Self-kindness entails being warm and understanding toward ourselves when we suffer, fail, or feel inadequate. Rather than ignoring our pain or being self-critical, we practice gentle self-talk and nurture our well-being. Common humanity recognizes that suffering and personal inadequacy are part of the shared human experience. 
Everyone goes through difficult times, and everyone makes mistakes. Acknowledging this helps us feel more connected to others rather than isolated by our imperfections. Mindfulness involves being present with our experiences without exaggeration or suppression. It is about observing our thoughts and feelings as they are, without trying to fix or avoid them. This balanced approach allows us to face our difficulties with greater clarity and compassion. In this chapter, we will delve into each aspect of self-compassion, exploring practical ways to integrate it into our daily lives. We will discuss how to overcome barriers such as self-criticism and perfectionism and how to build a compassionate inner voice that supports us through life's challenges. Embracing self-compassion is not a one-time act, but a continuous practice that enhances our overall well-being. As we proceed, remember that the journey of self-love starts with the gentle acceptance of ourselves. By cultivating self-compassion, we lay a solid foundation for personal growth, resilience, and true happiness. Let's begin by understanding what self-compassion truly is and how we can integrate it into our lives. What is self-compassion? Self-compassion is a powerful and transformative practice that involves treating ourselves with the same kindness, concern, and support we would offer to a good friend. It is a vital component of emotional health and well-being, allowing us to navigate life's ups and downs with greater ease and resilience. At its core, self-compassion consists of three key elements. One, self-kindness. Self-kindness means being warm and understanding toward ourselves, especially during times of pain or failure. Instead of harshly criticizing ourselves for shortcomings, we recognize our imperfections and treat ourselves with gentleness and care. It's about offering ourselves the same empathy and support that we would extend to others in similar situations. 2. Common Humanity Common humanity is the understanding that suffering and feelings of inadequacy are part of the shared human experience. Everyone goes through difficult times, and everyone makes mistakes. Recognizing this can help us feel more connected to others rather than isolated by our struggles. It reminds us that we are not alone in our pain and that imperfection is a natural part of being human. 3. Mindfulness Mindfulness involves being present with our thoughts and feelings without judgment. It means observing our experiences as they are, without trying to suppress or deny them. This balanced awareness helps us face our difficulties with clarity and equanimity. Instead of getting caught up in negative emotions or self-criticism, we acknowledge our feelings and respond to them with compassion. Understanding these components is essential for practicing self-compassion effectively. Self-kindness encourages us to be gentle with ourselves, common humanity reminds us of our interconnectedness, and mindfulness helps us stay balanced and present. Real-life example. Consider a scenario where you make a mistake at work. A typical reaction might be to harshly criticize yourself, feeling incompetent and embarrassed. However, a self-compassionate response would be different. You might acknowledge your disappointment, but also remind yourself that mistakes are part of the learning process. You would offer yourself kind words, perhaps thinking, it's okay to make mistakes. Everyone does. What can I learn from this experience? Practical tips. 1. Positive self-talk. Practice speaking to yourself kindly. When you notice self-critical thoughts, pause and reframe them into more compassionate ones. For example, instead of thinking, I'm such a failure, try, I'm doing the best I can, and it's okay to make mistakes. 2. Self-care routines. Incorporate self-care activities into your daily routine. This could include practices like meditation, journaling, exercise, or simply taking time to relax and unwind. Self-care helps nurture your well-being and reinforces the practice of self-kindness. 3. Reflect on common humanity. When you face challenges, Remind yourself that you are not alone. Reflect on the fact that everyone experiences difficulties and this shared human experience can be a source of comfort and connection. 4. Mindful Awareness Practice mindfulness by paying attention to your thoughts and feelings without judgment. When you feel overwhelmed, take a few deep breaths and observe your emotions with curiosity and compassion. This can help you stay grounded and respond to your experiences more effectively. By integrating these practices into your life, you can cultivate a more compassionate and supportive relationship with yourself. 
Self-compassion is not about being self-indulgent or ignoring your problems. It's about recognizing your worth and treating yourself with the care and respect you deserve. As we continue this journey, remember that self-compassion is a skill that takes time and practice to develop. Be patient with yourself and take small steps each day toward building a more compassionate inner dialogue. Embracing self-compassion will not only improve your relationship with yourself, but also enhance your overall well-being and happiness. Benefits of Self-Compassion Practicing self-compassion yields numerous psychological and emotional benefits that contribute to a healthier, happier, and more resilient life. Understanding these benefits can motivate us to embrace self-compassion more fully and integrate it into our daily lives. 1. Reduced Anxiety and Stress one of the most significant benefits of self-compassion is the reduction of anxiety and stress. When we are kind to ourselves during challenging times, we create a sense of safety and comfort that allows us to manage stress more effectively. Self-compassionate individuals are less likely to ruminate on their problems and more likely to approach them with a calm and balanced mindset. 2. Increased Resilience Self-compassion enhances our ability to bounce back from setbacks. By treating ourselves with kindness and understanding, we build a supportive inner environment that fosters resilience. This means that when we face difficulties, we are better equipped to recover and continue moving forward. Self-compassionate individuals view failures as opportunities for growth rather than as reflections of their worth. 3. Greater Emotional Well-Being Practicing self-compassion is associated with higher levels of emotional well-being. It promotes positive emotions such as happiness, contentment, and gratitude, while reducing negative emotions like sadness, anger, and frustration. By being gentle with ourselves, we create a more positive and nurturing emotional landscape. 4. Improved Relationships Self-compassion not only benefits our relationship with ourselves, but also enhances our relationships with others. When we are kind and understanding toward ourselves, we are more likely to extend that same kindness and understanding to others. This fosters deeper connections, empathy, and compassion in our interactions, leading to healthier and more fulfilling relationships. 5. Enhanced Motivation and Personal Growth Contrary to the belief that self-criticism is necessary for motivation, research shows that self-compassion actually enhances motivation and personal growth. When we are compassionate with ourselves, we create a supportive environment that encourages us to take risks and pursue our goals. We are more likely to engage in constructive self-improvement rather than getting stuck in a cycle of self-criticism and avoidance. Inspirational quote, You yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. Buddha. Real life example. Imagine a student who receives a poor grade on an important exam. A self-critical response might involve thoughts like, I'm a failure, I'll never be good enough. This response can lead to increased anxiety, decreased motivation, and a sense of hopelessness. In contrast, a self-compassionate response might involve acknowledging the disappointment, but also recognizing that one exam does not define their worth. The student might think, it's okay to feel disappointed. This is a learning opportunity. I can improve and do better next time. This approach fosters resilience, motivation, and a healthier emotional state. Practical tips. 1. Mindful self-reflection. Take time each day to reflect on your thoughts and emotions mindfully. Notice any self-critical thoughts and gently reframe them into compassionate ones. For example, if you find yourself thinking, I'm not good enough, try to reframe it to, I'm doing my best and that's enough. 2. Self-compassion break. When you feel overwhelmed or stressed, take a self-compassion break. Close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, and silently repeat phrases such as, May I be kind to myself, may I accept myself as I am, and may I give myself the compassion I need. 3. Gratitude Practice Cultivate a gratitude practice by regularly reflecting on things you appreciate about yourself. This can include your strengths, achievements, or positive qualities. Write them down in a journal and revisit them when you need a boost of self-compassion. 4. Visualization Visualize a compassionate figure, such as a mentor or loved one, offering you kindness and understanding. 
Imagine what they would say to you in moments of difficulty and try to internalize those supportive messages. By embracing these practices, you can experience the profound benefits of self-compassion. Remember that self-compassion is a journey and it's okay to take small steps. Each act of kindness you extend to yourself contributes to a more compassionate and fulfilling life. Chapter 1 Embracing Self-Compassion Practicing Self-Kindness Self-kindness is the practice of being warm and understanding toward ourselves, especially in moments of suffering, failure, or when we feel inadequate. It involves treating ourselves with the same care and compassion that we would offer to a friend in a similar situation. Practicing self-kindness is essential for building a positive relationship with ourselves and enhancing our overall well-being. 1. Positive Self-Talk One of the most effective ways to practice self-kindness is through positive self-talk. Our inner dialogue plays a significant role in shaping our self-perception and emotional state. By consciously shifting from self-critical to self-compassionate thoughts, we can cultivate a kinder and more supportive inner voice. Example, instead of thinking, I always mess things up, try reframing it to, it's okay to make mistakes. I'm learning and growing every day. Tip, when you notice negative self-talk, pause and ask yourself what you would say to a friend in the same situation. Then, direct those compassionate words toward yourself. Two, self-care routines. Incorporating self-care routines into your daily life is another powerful way to practice self-kindness. Self-care is about recognizing your needs and taking steps to meet them, whether they are physical, emotional, or mental. Examples, engage in activities that bring you joy and relaxation, such as reading a book, taking a walk in nature, or enjoying a warm bath. Tip, create a self-care checklist that includes activities you enjoy and make a commitment to include at least one self-care activity in your routine each day. Three, setting healthy boundaries. Setting healthy boundaries is a crucial aspect of self-kindness. It involves recognizing your limits and protecting your time and energy. By setting boundaries, you honor your own needs and prevent burnout. Example, if you find yourself feeling overwhelmed by demands from others, practice saying no politely but firmly. For instance, I appreciate your invitation, but I need some time for myself right now. Tip, reflect on areas of your life where you feel stretched too thin and identify ways to set clearer boundaries. This might involve delegating tasks, prioritizing your commitments, or simply taking a break. 4. Practicing forgiveness Forgiving yourself for past mistakes and shortcomings is a vital component of self-kindness. Holding on to guilt and regret can be detrimental to your mental and emotional health. By practicing forgiveness, you free yourself from the burden of self-judgment and create space for healing and growth. Example, if you made a decision in the past that you regret, remind yourself that everyone makes mistakes and that you did the best you could with the knowledge and resources you had at the time. Tip, write a letter to yourself expressing forgiveness for any past mistakes. Acknowledge your feelings and offer yourself compassion and understanding. Five, engaging in mindful practices. Mindfulness is about being present in the moment and accepting your thoughts and feelings without judgment. Engaging in mindful practices can help you cultivate self-kindness by encouraging a gentle and non-judgmental awareness of your experiences. Examples, practice mindfulness meditation, focus on your breath, or engage in mindful activities such as yoga or tai chi. Tip, set aside a few minutes each day to practice mindfulness. Even brief moments of mindful awareness can help you develop a more compassionate relationship with yourself. Real life scenario. Imagine you had a long, exhausting day at work and you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed. Instead of pushing yourself to continue working or criticizing yourself for not being productive enough, you decide to practice self-kindness. You acknowledge your feelings of exhaustion and choose to take a break. You make a cup of tea, sit in a comfortable chair, and read a few pages of your favorite book. By treating yourself with care and understanding, you nurture your well-being and replenish your energy. Practical exercise. 1. Daily Self-Kindness Journal Start a self-kindness journal where you write down at least one kind thing you did for yourself each day. Reflect on how these acts of kindness made you feel and how they contributed to your overall well-being. 2. Self-Compassion Mantra 
Create a self-compassion mantra that you can repeat to yourself in moments of difficulty. Examples include, I am worthy of love and kindness, or I am doing the best I can and that is enough. By integrating these practices into your life, you can develop a more compassionate and nurturing relationship with yourself. Remember that self-kindness is a continuous practice and each small step you take contributes to a healthier and happier you. Overcoming self-judgment. Self-judgment is a common barrier to self-compassion. It often manifests as self-criticism, perfectionism, and an overall harsh inner dialogue. Overcoming self-judgment is crucial for developing a kinder and more compassionate relationship with ourselves. Here, we will explore techniques to recognize and challenge self-judgment, paving the way for greater self-compassion. 1. Recognizing self-judgment The first step in overcoming self-judgment is to become aware of when it occurs. Self-judgment often happens automatically, without us even realizing it. By paying attention to our thoughts and feelings, we can begin to identify patterns of self-criticism and harsh self-talk. Example, notice when you use negative language about yourself, such as I'm so stupid or I'll never be good enough. Recognizing these thoughts is the first step toward changing them. Tip, keep a journal where you record instances of self-judgment. Note what triggered these thoughts and how they made you feel. 2. Challenging perfectionism Perfectionism is the belief that we must be flawless in everything we do. This unrealistic standard can lead to chronic self-judgment and dissatisfaction. Challenging perfectionism involves recognizing that imperfection is part of being human and that mistakes are opportunities for growth. Example, if you find yourself striving for perfection, remind yourself that doing your best is enough. Celebrate your efforts and progress rather than focusing solely on the outcome. Tip, set realistic goals and acknowledge your achievements, no matter how small. Practice self-compassion by accepting that perfection is unattainable and unnecessary. 3. Reframing negative thoughts. Reframing is a technique used to challenge and change negative thought patterns. By consciously shifting your perspective, you can reduce self-judgment and cultivate a more compassionate mindset. Example, instead of thinking, I failed because I'm not capable, reframe it to, I didn't succeed this time, but I learned valuable lessons that will help me improve. Tip, practice writing down negative thoughts and then rewriting them in a more positive and compassionate way. Over time, this practice can help change your automatic thought patterns. 4. Practicing self-compassionate language. The language we use when we talk to ourselves has a significant impact on our self-perception. Practicing self-compassionate language involves speaking to ourselves with kindness, understanding, and encouragement. Example, use phrases like, it's okay to make mistakes, I'm proud of my efforts, and I deserve kindness and respect. Tip, when you catch yourself using harsh or critical language, pause and consciously replace it with more compassionate words. 5. Embracing vulnerability. Embracing vulnerability is about accepting and expressing our true selves, including our weaknesses and imperfections. By allowing ourselves to be vulnerable, we open the door to greater self-acceptance and compassion. Example, share your struggles and feelings with a trusted friend or loved one. Vulnerability can help you feel more connected and less alone in your experiences. Tip, Practice self-acceptance by acknowledging your vulnerabilities and viewing them as a natural part of being human. Remind yourself that it's okay to be imperfect. Real-life scenario. Consider a situation where you made a mistake at work, such as missing a deadline. Instead of falling into a cycle of self-judgment and criticism, you recognize the mistake and acknowledge your feelings of disappointment. You then reframe the situation by reminding yourself that everyone makes mistakes and that this is an opportunity to learn and improve your time management skills. You use compassionate language to comfort yourself, such as, I did my best under the circumstances and I can do better next time. By embracing vulnerability, you discuss the mistake with your team and seek their support and understanding. Practical exercise. 1. Self-compassion journal. Each evening, write about any instances of self-judgment you experienced during the day. Reflect on how you can reframe those thoughts and what self-compassionate language you can use instead. 2. Mirror exercise. Stand in front of a mirror and speak kindly to yourself. 
Offer yourself words of encouragement and compassion, just as you would to a friend. This practice can help reinforce positive self-talk and reduce self-judgment. By practicing these techniques, you can begin to overcome self-judgment and develop a more compassionate and supportive relationship with yourself. Remember that overcoming self-judgment is a gradual process that requires patience and persistence. Each step you take towards self-compassion brings you closer to a healthier and happier you. Building a compassionate inner voice. Developing and maintaining a compassionate inner voice is essential for fostering self-compassion. Our inner voice significantly influences how we perceive ourselves and our experiences. By cultivating a nurturing and supportive inner dialogue, we can enhance our overall well-being and resilience. 1. Understanding your inner voice. The inner voice is the internal dialogue that runs through our minds throughout the day. It reflects our beliefs, attitudes, and self-perceptions. A compassionate inner voice is one that is kind, supportive, and understanding, even in the face of mistakes or challenges. Example, when you face a setback, instead of berating yourself with harsh criticism, your compassionate inner voice might say, it's okay. Everyone makes mistakes. What can I learn from this? Two, identifying negative self-talk. The first step in building a compassionate inner voice is to become aware of negative self-talk. This includes recognizing when you are being self-critical or judgmental. Negative self-talk can be automatic, so it requires conscious effort to identify and challenge these thoughts. Tip. Pay attention to the language you use when talking to yourself. Are you using harsh or negative terms? Make a note of these instances in a journal to help you become more aware. 3. Replacing negative self-talk with compassionate language. Once you have identified negative self-talk, the next step is to replace it with compassionate language. This involves consciously choosing to speak to yourself with kindness and understanding. Example, if you catch yourself thinking, I'm so bad at this, reframe it to, I'm learning and improving each day. It's okay to take time to get better. Tip, practice speaking to yourself as you would to a close friend. Use encouraging and supportive language. Four, practicing self-affirmations. Self-affirmations are positive statements that help reinforce a compassionate inner voice. By regularly repeating affirmations, you can shift your mindset and build a more supportive internal dialogue. Examples, I am worthy of love and respect. I am doing my best. I am proud of my efforts. Tip, write down a few affirmations and place them where you can see them daily, such as on your mirror, desk, or phone screen. Five, engaging in mindfulness practices. Mindfulness helps you stay present and aware of your thoughts and feelings without judgment. Engaging in mindfulness practices can help you cultivate a compassionate inner voice by promoting acceptance and non-judgmental awareness. Examples, mindfulness meditation, deep breathing exercises, body scan meditation. Tip, set aside a few minutes each day for mindfulness practice. This can help you stay grounded and develop a more compassionate perspective. Six, seeking support and encouragement. Surrounding yourself with supportive and encouraging people can help you build a compassionate inner voice. Seek out relationships that nurture and uplift you and be open to receiving support and encouragement from others. Example, share your struggles and achievements with a trusted friend or mentor. Their positive reinforcement can help you internalize a more compassionate inner voice. Tip, Join a support group or community that shares similar goals of self-compassion and personal growth. Real-life scenario. Imagine you're preparing for an important presentation at work. Your inner critic might start whispering doubts, such as, what if I mess up? I'm not good enough. Instead, you choose to activate your compassionate inner voice. You remind yourself of your preparation and strengths by thinking, I've worked hard on this presentation. It's okay to feel nervous but I am capable and ready. You also practice self-affirmations before the presentation, saying, I am confident and prepared. By nurturing a compassionate inner voice, you approach the presentation with a positive mindset and perform with greater ease and confidence. Practical exercise. One, inner dialogue journal. Start an inner dialogue journal where you record instances of negative self-talk and how you reframe them with compassionate language. Reflect on the changes you notice in your mindset and emotional well-being. 2. Daily Affirmation Practice 
Choose a few self-affirmations that resonate with you and repeat them daily. You can do this during your morning routine, while commuting, or before going to bed. Notice how these affirmations influence your inner dialogue over time. By integrating these practices into your life, you can build and maintain a compassionate inner voice. Remember that this process takes time and patience. Each step you take toward cultivating a supportive inner dialogue brings you closer to a more compassionate and fulfilling relationship with yourself. Exercise, reflecting on self-compassion. As we conclude this chapter on self-compassion, it's important to take some time to reflect on what we've learned and how we can apply these principles in our daily lives. This exercise will help you deepen your understanding of self-compassion and integrate it into your routine. Exercise, self-compassion reflection and action plan. One, reflect on self-compassionate moments. Think about a recent time when you faced a difficult situation. How did you respond to yourself? Were you kind and understanding, or did you engage in self-criticism? Write about this experience and how you felt. Prompt, describe a situation where you struggled or made a mistake. How did you talk to yourself in that moment? What emotions did you experience? Two, identify self-judgment patterns. Reflect on any patterns of self-judgment you have noticed. What triggers these thoughts and how do they impact you? Acknowledging these patterns is the first step toward changing them. Prompt, list common self-judgment thoughts you experience. What situations tend to trigger these thoughts? How do they affect your mood and behavior? Three, reframe negative thoughts. Choose one or two negative thoughts from your list and practice reframing them with compassionate language. Write down the original thought and the rephrased, more compassionate version. Prompt, take a negative thought you often have about yourself and reframe it in a compassionate way. For example, change I always mess things up to I'm learning and growing with each experience. Four, develop a self-compassion plan. Create a plan for incorporating self-compassion into your daily life. This might include setting reminders to practice positive self-talk, scheduling regular self-care activities, or keeping a self-compassion journal. Prompt, outline a daily or weekly plan to practice self-compassion. Include specific actions you will take, such as writing affirmations, taking mindfulness breaks, or engaging in self-care routines. Five, mindfulness meditation. Spend a few minutes each day practicing mindfulness meditation. Focus on your breath and gently bring your attention back whenever your mind wanders. This practice can help you cultivate a non-judgmental awareness of your thoughts and feelings. Prompt, set aside 5-10 minutes daily for mindfulness meditation. Reflect on how this practice helps you become more aware and accepting of your inner experiences. Conclusion, self-compassion is the foundation of self-love. By being kind to ourselves, Recognizing our shared humanity and practicing mindfulness, we can transform our relationship with ourselves. This chapter has provided you with the tools to begin cultivating self-compassion in your daily life. Remember, self-compassion is a continuous practice that enhances our overall well-being and resilience. As we move forward, we'll explore the next step in our journey, cultivating humility. Just as self-compassion allows us to be kind to ourselves, humility helps us stay grounded and connected with others. Together, these principles will guide us toward a deeper understanding and acceptance of ourselves. Keep practicing self-compassion and be patient with yourself as you grow. Every small step you take is a victory on your path to self-love and happiness. Chapter 2 Cultivating Humility Humility is often misunderstood in our modern society, where confidence and self-assuredness are frequently celebrated. However, humility is not about diminishing our worth or achievements. Rather, it is about recognizing our strengths and weaknesses without arrogance or self-deprecation. It allows us to stay grounded and fosters deeper connections with ourselves and others. Understanding humility is crucial for personal growth and self-love. It helps us maintain a balanced perspective, where we can appreciate our accomplishments while also being aware of our limitations. Humility enhances our self-awareness, making us more open to learning and growth. It encourages empathy and understanding, which are vital for building healthy relationships. In this chapter, we will explore the concept of humility and its significance in our lives. 
We will discuss how humility can enhance self-awareness, the balance between confidence and humility, and practical ways to cultivate humility in our daily lives. By embracing humility, we can foster a deeper sense of self-acceptance and compassion, both for ourselves and others. Let's begin by understanding what humility truly means and how it differs from low self-esteem or self-deprecation. Understanding Humility Humility is often confused with low self-esteem or self-deprecation, but it is a distinct and powerful quality. At its core, humility is the recognition of our own strengths and limitations, combined with an openness to learning from others. It is about being grounded and realistic in our self-assessment, without the need for self-aggrandizement or self-deprecation. 1. Defining Humility Humility can be defined as the quality of having a modest view of one's importance. It involves being honest about our abilities and achievements while acknowledging that we have much to learn and that others have valuable contributions to make. Example, a humble person might say, I am good at my job, but I know there are areas where I can improve and learn from my colleagues. Tip, reflect on your accomplishments with pride, but remain open to feedback and growth. Two. Distinguishing Humility from Low Self-Esteem While humility involves a realistic assessment of oneself, low self-esteem is characterized by a lack of confidence and a negative self-view. Humility is about balance. It acknowledges our worth without inflating or deflating it. Example, humility allows you to say, I am proud of what I have achieved, whereas low self-esteem might make you think, I don't deserve any recognition for what I've done. Tip, Practice recognizing your achievements without downplaying them, while also being open to areas for improvement. 3. The Role of Humility in Personal Growth Humility is essential for personal growth because it keeps us open to new experiences and learning opportunities. It allows us to accept that we do not have all the answers and that there is always room for improvement. Example, a humble attitude might lead you to seek out new skills or knowledge, Understanding that growth is a lifelong process. Tip, embrace a mindset of continuous learning. View challenges as opportunities to grow and improve. Four, humility and self-awareness. Humility enhances self-awareness by encouraging us to take an honest look at ourselves. It involves recognizing both our strengths and our weaknesses and being open to constructive criticism. Example, self-aware individuals might acknowledge, I am strong in this area but I need to work on improving my skills in that area. Tip, regularly seek feedback from others and reflect on it with an open mind. Real life scenario. Consider a scenario where you receive praise for a successful project at work. A humble response would involve accepting the compliment graciously while also acknowledging the contributions of your team and recognizing areas for future improvement. For instance, you might say, thank you, I'm glad the project was successful. It was a team effort, and I'm looking forward to applying what we learned to our next challenge. Practical tips. 1. Gratitude practice. Cultivate gratitude by regularly reflecting on the contributions of others and expressing appreciation. This practice can help you maintain a balanced perspective and foster humility. Tip. Start a gratitude journal where you write down things you are grateful for each day, including the help and support you receive from others. 2. Mindful Reflection Set aside time for mindful reflection on your actions, decisions, and interactions. Consider what you did well and what you could improve without judgment. Tip Practice mindful meditation or journaling to enhance your self-awareness and cultivate humility. 3. Seek Feedback Actively seek feedback from others to gain different perspectives on your performance and behavior. Use this feedback to improve and grow. Tip Create a habit of asking for constructive feedback after completing tasks or projects. Reflect on the feedback with an open and humble attitude. 4. Acknowledge others' contributions. Make a conscious effort to recognize and acknowledge the contributions of others. This practice not only fosters humility, but also strengthens your relationships. Tip. Whenever you achieve something significant, take time to thank those who helped you along the way. By understanding and practicing humility, you can enhance your self-awareness, foster deeper connections, and create a more balanced and fulfilling life. Remember, 
Humility is not about diminishing your worth, but about recognizing that everyone, including yourself, has valuable contributions to make. Humility and self-awareness. Humility and self-awareness are closely intertwined. Humility enhances our ability to see ourselves clearly, including both our strengths and our areas for improvement. By fostering self-awareness through humility, we become more open to learning and growth, and we develop a more balanced and realistic self-view. 1. The Connection Between Humility and Self-Awareness Self-awareness is the ability to recognize and understand our own thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. Humility helps us achieve self-awareness by encouraging an honest and non-judgmental assessment of ourselves. It involves acknowledging our achievements without inflating our ego and recognizing our limitations without harsh self-criticism. Example, a self-aware person might say, I excel in creative thinking, but I need to work on my organizational skills. Tip, regularly reflect on your strengths and areas for growth. This practice can help you maintain a balanced and humble perspective. 2. Recognizing Strengths and Weaknesses Humility allows us to recognize our strengths without boasting and acknowledge our weaknesses without shame. This balanced view is essential for personal and professional growth. Example, during a performance review, a humble and self-aware individual might highlight their accomplishments while also discussing areas where they seek improvement. Tip, create a list of your strengths and weaknesses. Use this list to guide your personal development goals. 3. Openness to Feedback Humility makes us more receptive to feedback, which is crucial for self-awareness and growth. By being open to constructive criticism, we can learn from others and continuously improve. Example, after completing a project, ask for feedback from colleagues and be open to their suggestions for improvement. Tip, approach feedback with a growth mindset. View it as an opportunity to learn rather than a personal attack. 4. The Role of Humility in Learning Humility helps us recognize that we do not have all the answers and that there is always room for learning. This mindset encourages us to seek out new knowledge and experiences. Example, a humble learner might say, I am good at what I do, but I know there are new techniques and ideas I can explore to improve further. Tip, stay curious and open to new information. Enroll in courses, attend workshops, and read extensively to expand your knowledge. Five. Balancing Confidence and Humility A key aspect of self-awareness is balancing confidence with humility. Confidence allows us to trust in our abilities, while humility keeps us grounded and open to growth. Example, a confident yet humble person might present their ideas assertively while also being open to feedback and alternative perspectives. Tip, Practice self-affirmation to build confidence and pair it with humility by seeking and valuing input from others. Real-life scenario. Imagine you're leading a team on a new project. You recognize your ability to lead and manage the project effectively, confidence, but you also acknowledge that you can learn from your team's expertise and feedback, humility. During team meetings, you present your ideas clearly and assertively while inviting your team members to share their insights and suggestions. This approach fosters a collaborative environment where everyone feels valued and contributes to the project's success. Practical tips. 1. Regular self-reflection. Set aside time each week for self-reflection. Consider your recent actions, decisions, and interactions. What did you do well? Where can you improve? Tip. Use a journal to record your reflections. This practice can help you maintain self-awareness and track your personal growth. 2. Mindful listening. Practice mindful listening in your interactions with others. Focus on understanding their perspectives without immediately forming a response. This can enhance your empathy and humility. Tip. During conversations, make a conscious effort to listen more and speak less. Reflect on what you learned from the interaction. 3. Seek diverse perspectives. Surround yourself with people who have different viewpoints and experiences. Engaging with diverse perspectives can challenge your assumptions and broaden your understanding. Tip. Join groups or communities with varied interests and backgrounds. Actively seek out conversations with people who think differently from you. 4. Embrace mistakes as learning opportunities. View mistakes as valuable opportunities for growth rather than failures. Reflect on what went wrong and how you can improve in the future. Tip. 
After a setback, take time to analyze the situation objectively. What did you learn from the experience? How can you apply this knowledge moving forward? By integrating humility with self-awareness, you can foster a balanced and realistic view of yourself. This approach not only enhances your personal growth, but also improves your relationships and overall well-being. Remember, humility is not about diminishing your worth, but about recognizing that there is always room for improvement and learning. The balance of confidence and humility. Striking a balance between confidence and humility is essential for personal and professional growth. Confidence gives us the courage to pursue our goals and trust in our abilities, while humility keeps us grounded and open to learning. Finding this balance helps us navigate life with grace and effectiveness. 1. Understanding Confidence and Humility Confidence is the belief in our abilities and judgment. It allows us to take risks, assert ourselves, and pursue our goals with determination. Humility, on the other hand, is the quality of being humble and recognizing our limitations. It involves being open to feedback, learning from others, and acknowledging that we do not have all the answers. Example, a confident person might say, I am capable of leading this project, while a humble person might add, I also know there is much I can learn from my team. Tip, practice self-awareness to understand when you need to assert your confidence and when to embrace humility. Two, the benefits of balancing confidence and humility. Balancing confidence and humility can lead to numerous benefits, including improved relationships, greater personal growth, and enhanced problem-solving abilities. Confidence without humility can lead to arrogance, while humility without confidence can result in self-doubt. Finding the right balance allows us to navigate these extremes effectively. Example, in a leadership role, Balancing confidence and humility can help you inspire and motivate your team while remaining open to their ideas and feedback. Tip, reflect on past experiences where you demonstrated both confidence and humility. Identify what worked well and what could be improved. Three, building confidence with humility. To build confidence with humility, focus on your strengths while remaining aware of your areas for improvement. Acknowledge your achievements without boasting and be open to feedback that can help you grow. Example, when receiving praise for a job well done, accept it graciously and acknowledge the contributions of others who helped you succeed. Tip, set realistic goals that challenge you to grow while recognizing and celebrating your progress along the way. 4. Practicing Humility with Confidence Practicing humility with confidence involves recognizing that your worth is not diminished by acknowledging your limitations. Embrace a growth mindset where you view challenges as opportunities to learn and improve. Example, when faced with a challenge, confidently state your plan of action while remaining open to input and suggestions from others. Tip, seek out mentors or role models who exemplify a balance of confidence and humility. Learn from their experiences and approach. 5. Real-Life Applications Balancing confidence and humility can be applied in various aspects of life, including personal relationships, work, and self-improvement. Example, in personal relationships, confidently express your needs and boundaries while also being open to understanding and accommodating the needs of others. Tip. In the workplace, take initiative and lead projects with confidence, while also valuing and incorporating feedback from colleagues and team members. Real-life scenario. Imagine you're applying for a promotion at work. You believe in your abilities and feel confident about your qualifications. During the interview, you highlight your accomplishments and the value you bring to the role. However, you also acknowledge areas where you can continue to grow and express your willingness to learn from others. This balanced approach demonstrates both confidence in your skills and humility in your ongoing development. Practical tips. 1. Self-reflection. Regularly reflect on your experiences to identify moments where you demonstrated confidence and humility. Consider what you learned from these experiences and how you can apply those lessons moving forward. Tip. Use a journal to document instances where you balanced confidence and humility. Reflect on how this balance affected the outcomes and relationships involved. 2. Seek constructive feedback. Actively seek feedback from trusted individuals who can provide honest and constructive insights. 
Use this feedback to build on your strengths and address areas for improvement. Tip. After completing a project or task, ask for feedback from colleagues or supervisors. Use their input to enhance your skills and approach. Three, cultivate a growth mindset. Embrace a growth mindset by viewing challenges as opportunities for learning and development. Approach each situation with a willingness to grow and improve. Tip, when faced with setbacks or failures, focus on what you can learn from the experience. Use this knowledge to inform your future actions. Four, celebrate achievements modestly. Acknowledge and celebrate your achievements without boasting. Recognize the contributions of others and express gratitude for their support. Tip, when discussing your accomplishments, use we instead of I to highlight the collaborative effort involved. For example, we successfully completed the project instead of I completed the project. By practicing these techniques, you can develop a balanced approach that combines confidence with humility. This balance will enhance your personal and professional relationships, promote continuous growth, and lead to a more fulfilling and successful life. Practicing humility in daily life. Practicing humility in our daily lives involves adopting attitudes and behaviors that reflect a balanced perspective of ourselves and others. By integrating humility into our routines, we can foster deeper connections, enhance our self-awareness, and create a more fulfilling life. One, gratitude practices. Gratitude is a powerful practice that fosters humility by encouraging us to recognize and appreciate the contributions of others. It shifts our focus from what we lack to what we have, promoting a sense of contentment and connection. Example, Start or end your day by reflecting on things you are grateful for, such as the support of friends and family, opportunities you have, or personal achievements. Tip, keep a gratitude journal where you write down three things you are grateful for each day. This practice can help cultivate a humble and appreciative mindset. Two, active listening. Active listening involves fully focusing on the speaker, understanding their message, and responding thoughtfully. It shows respect for others' perspectives and promotes humility by acknowledging that we can learn from anyone. Example, during conversations, give your full attention to the speaker without interrupting or planning your response. Reflect on what they say and respond with empathy and understanding. Tip, practice active listening by summarizing the speaker's points and asking clarifying questions. This demonstrates that you value their input and are open to learning from them. Three. Acknowledging mistakes. Humility involves recognizing and admitting our mistakes without defensiveness. By acknowledging our errors, we can learn from them and grow, fostering a culture of honesty and continuous improvement. Example, if you make a mistake at work, own up to it promptly and take responsibility for your actions. Apologize if necessary and focus on finding solutions. Tip. Reflect on your mistakes to understand what went wrong and how you can prevent similar issues in the future. Use these insights as opportunities for growth. 4. Serving others. Engaging in acts of service helps cultivate humility by putting the needs of others before our own. Volunteering and helping others can provide perspective and remind us of our shared humanity. Example, Volunteer at a local charity, help a neighbor with chores, or support a colleague with a challenging task. Tip, make a habit of performing small acts of kindness regularly. These actions can foster a sense of connection and humility. Five, embracing continuous learning. Humility involves recognizing that there is always more to learn. Embrace a mindset of continuous learning by seeking out new knowledge and experiences and being open to feedback and growth. Example, enroll in a course, attend workshops, or read books on topics that interest you. Seek out mentors who can provide guidance and insights. Tip, approach each learning opportunity with an open mind and a willingness to improve. Reflect on what you learn and how it can help you grow. Inspirational quote, humility is not thinking less about yourself, it's thinking about yourself less. Gavin Ortlund, real life scenario. Consider a scenario where you are leading a team project at work. Practicing humility involves actively listening to your team members' ideas and valuing their contributions. When challenges arise, acknowledge your mistakes and work collaboratively to find solutions. 
By showing gratitude for your team's efforts and embracing continuous learning, you foster a positive and productive work environment. Practical tips. One, daily reflection. Set aside time each day to reflect on your actions and interactions. Consider moments where you practiced humility and areas where you could improve. Tip, use a journal to document your reflections. This practice can help you track your progress and stay committed to cultivating humility. Two, mindful meditation. Practice mindful meditation to develop a greater sense of self-awareness and humility. Focus on your breath and observe your thoughts without judgment. Tip, incorporate mindful meditation into your daily routine, even if it's just for a few minutes. This can help you stay grounded and present. Three, express appreciation. Make it a habit to express appreciation to those around you. Recognize the efforts and contributions of others and let them know you value their support. Tip, write thank you notes or send appreciative messages to colleagues, friends, and family. This practice can strengthen your relationships and foster a sense of humility. Four, volunteer regularly. Find opportunities to volunteer in your community. Serving others can provide perspective and remind you of the importance of humility. Tip, choose volunteer activities that align with your interests and values. This can make the experience more fulfilling and impactful. By practicing humility in your daily life, you can enhance your self-awareness, build stronger relationships, and create a more balanced and fulfilling life. Remember, humility is not about thinking less of yourself, but about thinking of yourself less and recognizing the value of others. Humility and interpersonal relationships. Humility plays a crucial role in enhancing our interpersonal relationships. It fosters empathy, understanding, and respect, which are essential for building strong and meaningful connections with others. By practicing humility, we can create a more harmonious and supportive environment in our personal and professional lives. 1. Fostering Empathy Humility allows us to put ourselves in others' shoes, understanding their feelings and perspectives. This empathy helps build deeper connections and fosters a sense of shared humanity. Example, when a friend is going through a tough time, humility helps us listen without judgment and offer support without imposing our solutions. Tip, practice active listening and try to see situations from others' perspectives. This can enhance your empathy and strengthen your relationships. Two, encouraging open communication. Humility promotes open and honest communication by creating a safe space where people feel valued and heard. When we approach conversations with humility, we are more likely to listen attentively and respond thoughtfully. Example, in a team meeting, humility encourages you to listen to everyone's input and consider their ideas without immediately dismissing or overshadowing them. Tip, Foster open communication by asking open-ended questions and encouraging others to share their thoughts and feelings. Three, building trust and respect. Humility helps build trust and respect in relationships. When we acknowledge our own limitations and appreciate others' strengths, we create a foundation of mutual respect and trust. Example, admitting when you don't know something or when you've made a mistake can build trust and show that you value honesty and integrity. Tip, be honest and transparent in your interactions. Show appreciation for others' contributions and acknowledge your own shortcomings. Four, enhancing collaboration. Humility enhances collaboration by valuing diverse perspectives and encouraging teamwork. It helps us recognize that we can achieve more together than we can individually. Example, in a collaborative project, humility leads you to actively seek and incorporate feedback from team members, recognizing the value of their expertise. Tip, promote a collaborative environment by celebrating team successes and recognizing the contributions of each member. Five, resolving conflicts. Humility plays a vital role in conflict resolution. It helps us approach disagreements with an open mind and a willingness to understand and address the underlying issues. Example, during a conflict, humility allows you to acknowledge your part in the disagreement and work towards a mutually beneficial solution. Tip, approach conflicts with a focus on understanding the other person's perspective and finding common ground. Be willing to compromise and seek solutions that benefit all parties involved. Real-life scenario. 
Imagine you're working on a team project at work and a disagreement arises about the direction of the project. Practicing humility, you listen to your colleagues' viewpoints without interrupting. You acknowledge the merits of their ideas and openly share your own thoughts, inviting feedback. By fostering an environment of mutual respect and collaboration, you help the team reach a consensus that incorporates everyone's input and moves the project forward effectively. Practical tips. One, active listening. Make a conscious effort to listen more than you speak in conversations. Focus on understanding the other person's perspective and responding with empathy. Tip, during conversations, avoid interrupting or planning your response while the other person is speaking. Instead, fully engage in listening and understanding their message. Two, express gratitude. Regularly express gratitude and appreciation for the people in your life. Acknowledge their contributions and let them know they are valued. Tip, write thank you notes or verbally express your appreciation to friends, family, and colleagues. This practice can strengthen your relationships and foster humility. Three, seek diverse perspectives. Actively seek out and consider diverse perspectives in your decision-making processes. Value the input of others and recognize that you can learn from their experiences. Tip, Create opportunities for collaboration and encourage team members to share their ideas and insights. This can lead to more innovative and effective solutions. Four, admit mistakes. When you make a mistake, admit it openly and take responsibility for your actions. This shows humility and builds trust in your relationships. Tip, practice self-reflection to recognize and acknowledge your mistakes. Use these experiences as opportunities for growth and improvement. Five, promote inclusivity. Foster an inclusive environment where everyone feels valued and respected. Recognize and celebrate the unique strengths and contributions of each individual. Tip, encourage participation and create space for everyone's voice to be heard. Show appreciation for the diversity of perspectives and experiences within your group. By practicing humility in your interpersonal relationships, you can build stronger, more meaningful connections and create a supportive and collaborative environment. Remember, humility is about valuing others as much as yourself and recognizing the importance of empathy, respect, and open communication. Exercise, reflecting on humility. As we conclude this chapter on humility, it's important to reflect on what we've learned and how we can integrate these principles into our daily lives. This exercise will help you deepen your understanding of humility and apply it to enhance your personal growth and relationships. Exercise, humility reflection and action plan. One, reflect on humble moments. Think about a recent time when you demonstrated humility. How did it affect your interactions and relationships? Write about this experience and what you learned from it. Prompt, describe a situation where you practiced humility. How did it influence the outcome and your relationship with others? What insights did you gain from this experience? Two, identify opportunities for humility. Reflect on areas in your life where you can practice more humility. Consider your interactions at work, with friends and family, and in your community. Prompt, list specific situations or relationships where you can apply humility. How can you approach these opportunities with a humble mindset? Three, embrace feedback. Seek feedback from others to gain a better understanding of your strengths and areas for improvement. Reflect on this feedback and how it can help you grow. Prompt, ask a trusted friend, family member, or colleague for constructive feedback. How can you use their insights to enhance your humility and personal growth? Four, practice gratitude and empathy. Incorporate gratitude and empathy into your daily routine. Reflect on how these practices can foster humility and strengthen your relationships. Prompt, write down three things you are grateful for each day and one way you demonstrated empathy. How do these practices influence your perspective and interactions? Five, set humility goals. Create a plan for practicing humility in your daily life. Set specific, achievable goals that will help you cultivate a humble mindset and improve your relationships. Prompt, Outline a plan with actionable steps to practice humility. Include goals such as listening more actively, acknowledging others' contributions, and seeking continuous learning opportunities. Conclusion. Humility is a powerful and transformative quality that enhances our self-awareness, 
fosters deeper connections, and promotes continuous growth. By practicing humility, we create a more balanced and fulfilling life. This chapter has provided you with insights and tools to cultivate humility in your daily interactions and relationships. As we move forward, we'll explore the next step in our journey, the path to self-love. Just as humility helps us stay grounded and connected with others, self-love empowers us to embrace and celebrate our authentic selves. Together, these principles will guide us toward a deeper understanding and acceptance of ourselves. Keep practicing humility and be patient with yourself as you grow. Every small step you take is a victory on your path to self-love and happiness. Chapter 3 The Path to Self-Love Self-love is the ultimate goal of our journey. It is about embracing and celebrating who we are, recognizing our intrinsic worth, and treating ourselves with kindness and respect. In a world that often pressures us to conform to external standards of perfection, self-love reminds us that we are enough just as we are. Understanding self-love is crucial for leading a fulfilling and happy life. It empowers us to accept our strengths and weaknesses, to pursue our passions, and to set healthy boundaries. Self-love is not about being self-indulgent or narcissistic. It is about honoring our own needs and well-being, so we can show up authentically and fully in our relationships and endeavors. In this chapter, we will explore the concept of self-love and its significance in our lives. We will discuss the importance of self-analysis for growth, the role of change in personal development, and strategies for embracing and celebrating our true selves. We will also consider how encouraging others to love themselves can create a supportive and nurturing community. Let's begin by defining what self-love means and why it is essential for our mental health and happiness. Defining self-love. Self-love is the practice of appreciating and valuing oneself. It involves recognizing our worth, treating ourselves with kindness and compassion, and nurturing our physical, emotional, and mental well-being. Self-love is foundational to a healthy and fulfilling life, as it shapes how we view ourselves and interact with the world. 1. What is self-love? Self-love means accepting ourselves fully, including our strengths and imperfections. It involves taking care of our own needs and not sacrificing our well-being to please others. Self-love is about setting boundaries, being true to ourselves, and making choices that honor our values and goals. Example. Practicing self-love might involve saying no to an additional work project that would overextend you in order to maintain a healthy work-life balance. Tip, reflect on areas of your life where you may be neglecting your needs and consider ways to prioritize self-care. 2. The importance of self-love. Self-love is essential for mental health and happiness. It helps us build resilience, reduces stress and anxiety, and enhances our overall well-being. When we love ourselves, we are more likely to make positive choices and pursue our goals with confidence. Example, someone with a strong sense of self-love is more likely to pursue a career they are passionate about, even if it means taking risks or facing challenges. Tip, practice self-affirmations to reinforce your self-worth and remind yourself of your intrinsic value. 3. Misconceptions about self-love there are many misconceptions about self-love, such as the idea that it is selfish or narcissistic. In reality, self-love is about maintaining a healthy relationship with oneself, which is necessary for forming healthy relationships with others. Example, self-love allows you to set boundaries without feeling guilty, understanding that taking care of yourself enables you to be there for others more effectively. Tip, Challenge negative beliefs about self-love by educating yourself about its true meaning and benefits. 4. The Role of Self-Love in Personal Growth Self-love encourages personal growth by fostering a mindset of acceptance and compassion. It allows us to acknowledge our flaws and mistakes without self-judgment, creating a safe space for learning and development. Example, when facing a setback, self-love helps you view it as a learning opportunity rather than a reflection of your worth. Tip, practice self-reflection regularly to understand your needs, desires, and areas for growth. 5. Self-love and relationships. Loving ourselves is fundamental to building healthy and fulfilling relationships. When we have a strong sense of self-love, 
We are less likely to seek validation from others and more likely to form balanced and respectful connections. Example, a person who practices self-love is better able to communicate their needs and boundaries in a relationship, fostering mutual respect and understanding. Tip, evaluate your relationships to ensure they are supportive and nurturing and make adjustments as needed to align with your self-love practice. Real life scenario. Consider a scenario where you are offered a promotion at work that comes with increased responsibilities and stress. Practicing self-love might involve evaluating whether this new role aligns with your personal values and well-being. If taking the promotion would lead to burnout and negatively impact your mental health, self-love would guide you to make a decision that prioritizes your overall happiness, even if it means declining the promotion. Practical tips. 1. Self-affirmations. Incorporate self-affirmations into your daily routine to reinforce your self-worth. Statements like, I am worthy of love and respect and I trust myself to make the right decisions can boost your confidence and self-esteem. Tip, write down your affirmations and place them where you can see them daily, such as on your mirror or desk. Two, self-care routine. Develop a self-care routine that includes activities that nurture your physical, emotional, and mental well-being. This could include exercise, meditation, hobbies, and spending time with loved ones. Tip, schedule self-care activities in your calendar to ensure you make time for them regularly. Three, setting boundaries. Learn to set healthy boundaries to protect your well-being. This involves saying no to demands that overextend you and communicating your needs clearly to others. Tip, practice saying no in low-stakes situations to build your confidence in setting boundaries. Four, mindfulness practices. Engage in mindfulness practices to stay present and connected to your inner self. This can help you tune into your needs and make choices that align with your values. Tip, incorporate mindfulness meditation or deep breathing exercises into your daily routine. By understanding and practicing self-love, you can create a more balanced and fulfilling life. Remember, self-love is a continuous journey and it requires patience and compassion towards yourself. Embrace this journey with an open heart and a commitment to honoring your true self. Self-analysis for growth. Self-analysis is a critical component of self-love and personal growth. It involves taking a reflective and honest look at ourselves to understand our behaviors, thoughts, and emotions. By engaging in self-analysis, we can identify areas for improvement, set meaningful goals, and make positive changes that align with our true selves. 1. The Importance of Self-Analysis Self-analysis helps us gain insight into our motivations, strengths, and weaknesses. It allows us to understand why we act the way we do and how our past experiences shape our present behaviors. This awareness is the first step towards personal growth and self-improvement. Example, reflecting on a recent conflict with a friend can help you understand your triggers and reactions, enabling you to address underlying issues and improve your relationship. Tip, set aside regular time for self-reflection, such as journaling or meditation, to develop a deeper understanding of yourself. Two, techniques for effective self-analysis. There are various techniques you can use to engage in effective self-analysis. These include journaling, meditation, seeking feedback, and using self-assessment tools. Each technique offers unique benefits and can help you gain different perspectives on your experiences. Example, journaling allows you to articulate your thoughts and feelings, making it easier to identify patterns and gain clarity on your emotions. Tip, experiment with different techniques to find what works best for you. Combine multiple methods for a more comprehensive self-analysis. Three, Setting goals based on self-analysis. Once you have gained insights through self-analysis, the next step is to set specific, achievable goals for personal growth. These goals should be aligned with your values and aspirations, and they should challenge you to become the best version of yourself. Example, if self-analysis reveals that you struggle with time management, set a goal to develop better organizational skills and create a daily schedule. Tip, use the SMART criteria specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound, to set clear and actionable goals. 4. Embracing change. Change is an inevitable part of personal growth. By embracing change, we can adapt to new situations, overcome challenges, and continuously improve ourselves. 
Self-analysis helps us identify the changes we need to make and gives us the confidence to pursue them. Example, recognizing that a certain habit is holding you back allows you to make a conscious effort to change that behavior and replace it with a more positive one. Tip, view change as an opportunity for growth rather than a threat. Celebrate small successes along the way to stay motivated. Five, overcoming barriers to self-analysis. Engaging in self-analysis can be challenging, especially if it involves confronting uncomfortable truths or past traumas. It's important to approach self-analysis with compassion and patience and to seek support when needed. Example, if reflecting on past experiences triggers anxiety, consider working with a therapist or counselor who can provide guidance and support. Tip, Practice self-compassion and remind yourself that self-analysis is a tool for growth, not self-criticism. Real-life scenario. Imagine you recently received feedback at work that your communication skills need improvement. Through self-analysis, you reflect on specific instances where your communication might have fallen short and identify patterns, such as interrupting others or not listening actively. You set a goal to improve your communication by practicing active listening and seeking feedback from colleagues. Over time, you notice that your relationships at work improve and you feel more confident and effective in your role. Practical tips. 1. Journaling. Start a daily journaling practice to reflect on your thoughts, feelings, and experiences. Use prompts to guide your reflections, such as what did I learn today? Or how did I handle challenges today? Tip. Set aside a specific time each day for journaling, such as in the morning or before bed. Keep your journal in a place where you can easily access it. 2. Meditation. Incorporate meditation into your routine to enhance self-awareness and mindfulness. Focus on observing your thoughts and emotions without judgment. Tip. Start with short meditation sessions and gradually increase the duration. Use guided meditation apps or videos if you need assistance. 3. Seeking feedback. Regularly seek feedback from trusted friends, family members, or colleagues to gain different perspectives on your behavior and areas for improvement. Tip, approach feedback with an open mind and a willingness to learn. Thank the person for their insights and consider how you can apply their suggestions. 4. Using self-assessment tools. Explore self-assessment tools, such as personality tests or skills assessments, to gain additional insights into your strengths and areas for growth. Tip, Use the results of these assessments to guide your goal setting and personal development plans. Five, setting SMART goals. Use the SMART criteria to set specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals based on your self-analysis. Tip, break down larger goals into smaller, manageable steps. Track your progress and adjust your goals as needed. By engaging in self-analysis and setting meaningful goals, you can foster continuous growth and self-improvement. Remember, self-analysis is a tool for understanding and nurturing yourself, not for self-judgment. Embrace this process with compassion and curiosity and celebrate the progress you make along the way. Embracing change. Change is an integral part of personal development and self-love. It allows us to grow, adapt, and improve ourselves continuously. While change can be challenging and sometimes intimidating, it is essential for our well-being and happiness. Embracing change means viewing it as an opportunity for growth rather than a threat. 1. The role of change in personal development. Change helps us break free from old patterns and habits that no longer serve us. It encourages us to step out of our comfort zones and explore new possibilities. Embracing change allows us to evolve and become more resilient in the face of life's challenges. Example, changing a job or career path can be daunting, but it can also lead to greater fulfillment and opportunities for growth. Tip, reflect on past changes you've experienced and the positive outcomes that resulted from them. Use these reflections to build confidence in facing future changes. Two, viewing change as an opportunity. To embrace change, it's important to shift our perspective and see it as an opportunity for learning and growth. This mindset allows us to approach change with curiosity and openness rather than fear and resistance. Example, when faced with a new challenge, instead of focusing on potential failures, consider what you can learn and how you can grow from the experience. Tip, practice reframing negative thoughts about change into positive ones. 
For instance, instead of thinking, this is too difficult, try thinking, this is a chance to learn and improve. Three, building resilience through change. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from setbacks and adapt to new situations. Embracing change helps us build resilience by teaching us how to navigate uncertainty and cope with challenges effectively. Example, moving to a new city can be stressful, but it also offers opportunities to meet new people, explore different cultures, and develop new skills. Tip, focus on building a strong support network and practicing self-care to enhance your resilience during times of change. Four, setting goals for change. Setting clear and achievable goals can help us navigate change more effectively. Goals provide direction and motivation, helping us stay focused and committed to our growth. Example, if you want to develop a healthier lifestyle, set specific goals such as exercising three times a week, eating balanced meals, and getting adequate sleep. Tip, use the SMART criteria, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound, to set realistic and actionable goals for personal change. Five, overcoming fear of change. Fear of change is natural, but it can hold us back from reaching our full potential. Overcoming this fear involves acknowledging it, understanding its root causes, and taking small steps to move forward. Example, if you're afraid of public speaking, start by practicing in front of a small, supportive group and gradually increase your audience size. Tip, Break down larger changes into smaller, manageable steps. Celebrate each step you take to build confidence and reduce fear. Real-life scenario. Imagine you're considering going back to school to pursue a new degree. The prospect of returning to academia and managing the demands of coursework alongside your current responsibilities might feel overwhelming. However, by embracing this change, you open yourself to new knowledge, skills, and career opportunities. You set specific goals for your studies, build a support network of family and friends, and approach each challenge with a growth mindset. Over time, you find that the change not only enhances your career prospects, but also boosts your confidence and resilience. Practical tips. One, reflect on past changes. Take time to reflect on significant changes you've experienced in the past. Consider how you navigated these changes and the positive outcomes that resulted. Tip. Write about these experiences in a journal. Reflecting on past successes can help you build confidence in facing future changes. Two, practice positive self-talk. Use positive self-talk to shift your mindset and reduce fear of change. Remind yourself of your strengths and capabilities. Tip, create a list of positive affirmations related to change, such as I am capable of adapting to new situations or change brings new opportunities. Three, seek support. Reach out to friends, family, or mentors who can provide guidance and encouragement during times of change. Sharing your experiences and feelings can help you feel more supported and less isolated. Tip, join support groups or online communities where you can connect with others going through similar changes. Four, focus on the present. Practice mindfulness to stay present and focused during times of change. This can help reduce anxiety about the future and keep you grounded. Tip, incorporate mindfulness practices such as meditation, deep breathing, or yoga into your daily routine. Five, celebrate small wins. Acknowledge and celebrate small achievements along the way. Recognizing your progress can boost your motivation and confidence. Tip, keep a success journal where you record your achievements and positive experiences related to the change. By embracing change with an open mind and a positive attitude, you can enhance your personal growth and well-being. Remember, change is a natural and necessary part of life. Each change you embrace brings new opportunities for learning, growth, and self-discovery. Celebrating your true self. Celebrating your true self is about embracing and honoring who you are with all your unique qualities, strengths, and imperfections. It involves recognizing your intrinsic worth and living authentically, free from the pressure to conform to external expectations. By celebrating your true self, you cultivate a deep sense of self-love and fulfillment. 1. Embracing authenticity. Living authentically means being true to yourself and aligning your actions with your values and beliefs. It involves expressing yourself honestly and embracing your individuality, even if it means standing out or going against the norm. Example, 
If you have a passion for art, pursue it wholeheartedly, even if others do not understand or appreciate it. Tip. Reflect on your core values and passions. Make a conscious effort to align your daily actions with these values. 2. Practicing self-affirmation. Self-affirmation involves recognizing and appreciating your positive qualities and accomplishments. It helps reinforce your self-worth and boosts your confidence. Example, each morning, take a moment to acknowledge something you appreciate about yourself, such as your kindness, creativity, or resilience. Tip, write a list of your strengths and achievements. Refer to this list whenever you need a reminder of your worth. Three, setting healthy boundaries. Setting healthy boundaries is essential for maintaining your well-being and honoring your true self. It involves saying no to demands that overextend you and protecting your time and energy. Example, if attending social events every weekend leaves you feeling drained, set a boundary by limiting your commitments and prioritizing rest. Tip, practice assertive communication to clearly express your needs and boundaries to others. 4. Surrounding yourself with supportive people. The people you surround yourself with can have a significant impact on your self-perception and well-being. Seek out relationships that uplift and support you and distance yourself from those that drain your energy or undermine your self-worth. Example, cultivate friendships with people who celebrate your successes and encourage your growth. Tip, regularly evaluate your relationships and make adjustments to ensure they align with your values and support your well-being. Five, engaging in self-care. Self-care is an essential practice for celebrating your true self. It involves taking time to nurture your physical, emotional, and mental health, and doing activities that bring you joy and relaxation. Example, set aside time each week for activities you enjoy, such as reading, hiking, or spending time with loved ones. Tip, create a self-care routine that includes regular practices to nurture your well-being. Real-life scenario. Imagine you have always loved dancing, but you stopped pursuing it because you felt self-conscious about your abilities. Celebrating your true self involves reconnecting with your passion for dance. You might start by taking a dance class or practicing at home, allowing yourself to enjoy the process without worrying about perfection. As you embrace your love for dance, you feel more confident and connected to your authentic self. Practical tips. 1. Daily self-affirmations. Start each day with a self-affirmation to remind yourself of your worth and positive qualities. Choose affirmations that resonate with you and reflect your true self. Tip, write your affirmations on sticky notes and place them where you can see them daily, such as on your mirror or desk. Two, authenticity journal. Keep a journal where you reflect on your experiences of living authentically. Write about moments when you felt true to yourself and how it made you feel. Tip, Use journal prompts such as what does living authentically mean to me and how can I align my actions with my values today? Three, set and communicate boundaries. Identify areas in your life where you need to set boundaries. Practice communicating these boundaries clearly and assertively to others. Tip, role play boundaries setting conversations with a trusted friend or therapist to build confidence. Four, create a supportive environment. Surround yourself with people who uplift and support you. Seek out communities or groups that share your interests and values. Tip, join clubs, groups, or online communities where you can connect with like-minded individuals. Five, prioritize self-care. Make self-care a non-negotiable part of your routine. Schedule regular self-care activities and treat them as important appointments with yourself. Tip, Create a self-care checklist that includes activities for physical, emotional, and mental well-being. Review and update it regularly to ensure it meets your needs. By celebrating your true self, you nurture a deep sense of self-love and fulfillment. Embrace your unique qualities, honor your values, and live authentically. Remember, you are worthy of love and respect just as you are. Celebrate your journey and the person you are becoming. Encouraging others. Encouraging others to embrace self-love creates a ripple effect that can foster a supportive and nurturing community. When we practice self-love and encourage those around us to do the same, we contribute to a culture of acceptance, compassion, and empowerment. 1. Leading by example. One of the most effective ways to encourage others is to lead by example. 
By practicing self-love and living authentically, you inspire those around you to do the same. Your actions and attitudes can demonstrate the benefits of self-love and encourage others to embark on their own journey. Example, share your experiences of practicing self-care and setting boundaries and how these actions have positively impacted your well-being. Tip, be open about your journey of self-love, including the challenges and successes. Authenticity can inspire others to follow suit. Two, offering support and encouragement. Providing support and encouragement to others can help them feel more confident and motivated to practice self-love. Simple acts of kindness and words of affirmation can make a significant difference in someone's life. Example, compliment a friend on their strengths and achievements, or offer a listening ear when they need to talk. Tip, regularly check in with loved ones and offer encouragement. Let them know you believe in their worth and potential. Three, creating a positive environment. Creating a positive and supportive environment is crucial for fostering self-love. Encourage open communication, mutual respect, and acceptance within your social circles. A positive environment allows people to feel safe and valued, making it easier for them to practice self-love. Example, in your workplace or community group, promote inclusivity and respect. Encourage positive interactions and discourage negative or judgmental behavior. Tip, organize activities or events that promote self-care, mindfulness, and personal growth. These can help build a supportive community focused on well-being. 4. Sharing resources and knowledge Sharing resources and knowledge about self-love can empower others to take steps toward their own self-care and personal growth. Books, articles, workshops, and online courses can provide valuable insights and practical tips. Example, recommend a book on self-compassion or share an article about mindfulness practices with a friend who might benefit from it. Tip, Create a resource list of your favorite self-love materials and share it with your network. Encourage others to explore and find what resonates with them. 5. Encouraging self-reflection and growth. Encourage others to engage in self-reflection and personal growth by asking thoughtful questions and providing gentle prompts. Help them identify their strengths, set goals, and celebrate their progress. Example, ask a friend about their recent accomplishments and what they are proud of. Encourage them to reflect on their growth and set new goals. Tip, share your own reflections and growth experiences as conversation starters. This can inspire others to think about their own journeys. Real life scenario. Imagine you have a coworker who often doubts their abilities and struggles with self-criticism. By leading by example, you openly share your own experiences with self-doubt and how you practice self-compassion to overcome it. You offer words of encouragement and acknowledge their contributions during team meetings. Over time, your coworker begins to adopt similar practices and gains more confidence in their abilities. Practical tips. One, be a role model. Practice self-love and self-care consistently in your own life. Let your actions and attitudes serve as a positive example for others. Tip, share your self-care routines and personal growth strategies with friends and family. Encourage them to try out new practices that promote well-being. Two, offer genuine compliments. Take the time to recognize and compliment the strengths and achievements of those around you. Genuine compliments can boost self-esteem and encourage self-love. Tip, be specific in your compliments. Instead of saying you're great, try I admire how dedicated you are to your work and how you always bring new ideas to the table. Three, promote open communication. Foster an environment where people feel comfortable sharing their thoughts and feelings. Encourage open and honest communication without judgment. Tip, practice active listening and validate others' experiences. Let them know their feelings are heard and respected. Four, share helpful resources. Introduce others to books, articles, podcasts, or courses that have helped you on your self-love journey. Sharing resources can provide valuable guidance and inspiration. Tip, Create a shared online folder or group where you can regularly post and discuss self-love resources with friends or colleagues. Five, celebrate progress together. Encourage others to celebrate their milestones and achievements, no matter how small. Acknowledge their efforts and growth. Tip, 
Organize regular check-ins or gatherings where you and your friends or colleagues can share updates on your personal growth journeys and celebrate each other's successes. By encouraging others to practice self-love, you contribute to a supportive and nurturing community. Together, we can create a culture where self-acceptance and compassion are the norms. Remember, the journey to self-love is unique for everyone, and your encouragement can make a significant difference in someone else's life. Exercise, reflecting on self-love. As we conclude this chapter on self-love, it's important to take some time to reflect on what we've learned and how we can apply these principles in our daily lives. This exercise will help you deepen your understanding of self-love and integrate it into your routine. Exercise, self-love reflection and action plan. One, reflect on self-love practices. Think about a recent time when you practice self-love. How did it affect your mood and well-being? Write about this experience and what you learned from it. Prompt. Describe a situation where you made a conscious effort to practice self-love. How did it impact your day and your feelings about yourself? 2. Identify barriers to self-love. Reflect on any barriers or challenges you face in practicing self-love. Consider how you can overcome these obstacles and create a more supportive environment for yourself. Prompt. What prevents you from practicing self-love consistently? How can you address these barriers and make self-love a regular part of your life? Three, set self-love goals. Create specific, achievable goals for enhancing your self-love practice. These goals should be aligned with your values and focus on nurturing your physical, emotional, and mental well-being. Prompt, what are three self-love goals you want to achieve in the next month? How will you track your progress and stay committed to these goals? 4. Create a self-love affirmation. Develop a personal affirmation that reinforces your commitment to self-love. Use this affirmation daily to remind yourself of your worth and to cultivate a positive mindset. Prompt. Write a self-love affirmation that resonates with you. Repeat it to yourself each day to reinforce your self-worth and commitment to self-care. 5. Develop a support network. Identify people in your life who support your journey to self-love. Think about how you can engage with this support network to stay motivated and encouraged. Prompt, who are the people that support and uplift you? How can you involve them in your journey to self-love and create a mutually supportive environment? Conclusion, self-love is a continuous journey that involves embracing your true self, setting healthy boundaries, and nurturing your well-being. By practicing self-love, you build a foundation for a happier, more fulfilling life. This chapter has provided you with tools and insights to enhance your self-love practice. As we move forward, let's remember that self-love is not a destination, but a lifelong commitment. Be patient and compassionate with yourself as you grow. Celebrate your progress and continue to encourage others to embrace their own journey of self-love. Keep practicing self-love and be proud of the person you are becoming. Every step you take is a victory on your path to happiness and fulfillment. Book conclusion, embrace your path, the lifelong journey of self-love. As we conclude this journey together, it's important to remember that loving yourself is a lifelong commitment. The path to self-love is not always easy, but it is the most rewarding journey you can embark on. Each step you take towards embracing your true self brings you closer to a life filled with happiness, fulfillment, and inner peace. Throughout this book, we've explored the foundational principles of self-compassion, humility, self-analysis, and self-love. We've learned that true happiness begins from within and that by loving ourselves, we set the stage for a more meaningful and joyful life. It's essential to be patient with yourself and to recognize that self-love is a continuous practice. There will be moments of doubt and setbacks, but these are opportunities for growth and deeper understanding. Embrace your strengths and imperfections. Loving yourself means accepting every part of who you are, your strengths, your flaws, your successes, and your failures. It's about celebrating your unique qualities and understanding that imperfection is a natural part of being human. By embracing your true self, you free yourself from the pressures of perfection and societal expectations. Set healthy boundaries. Setting boundaries is an act of self-respect and self-care. It allows you to protect your well-being and prioritize your needs. 
Remember that it is okay to say no and to prioritize activities and relationships that nurture and uplift you. Boundaries help you maintain a balanced and healthy life. Practice self-compassion. Treat yourself with the same kindness and understanding that you would offer to a dear friend. When you face challenges or make mistakes, be gentle with yourself. Self-compassion fosters resilience and helps you navigate life's ups and downs with grace and strength. Encourage and support others. As you continue your journey of self-love, extend the same encouragement and support to those around you. By fostering a culture of self-acceptance and compassion, we create a more loving and supportive community. Your journey can inspire others to embrace their own paths to self-love. Celebrate your journey. Take time to celebrate your progress and achievements, no matter how small. Each step you take towards loving yourself is a victory. Reflect on your growth and be proud of the person you are becoming. You are deserving of love, respect, and happiness. An uplifting message. Remember that you are enough just as you are. Your worth is not determined by external achievements or the opinions of others, but by the intrinsic value of your being. You are unique, beautiful, and worthy of all the love and happiness life has to offer. Keep growing, keep loving, and always remember, you are enough. Embrace your journey with an open heart and a spirit of kindness. The path to self-love is yours to walk, and each step you take brings you closer to the beautiful, authentic, and fulfilled life you deserve. Thank you for allowing me to accompany you on this journey. May your path be filled with love, joy, and endless possibilities.